Hi guys! Today I will show you how to make a fantasy house like this, with a treetop illuminated, a lantern at the entrance and lighting inside. The lighting works from USB and flicks on with two claps. I modeled the house and a tree on a drawing from a mobile game. The model was printed on a 3D printer. The base from the leaf is made from a Pinaplex. Pinaplex is the most accessible and yielding material for various kind of work. It doesn't absorb any liquids, it is dense and doesn't crumble like styrofoam when you handle it. So I'm gluing two pieces of Panaplex with thermal glue. It is important to not overheat the glue, otherwise it burns through the Panaplex and glued section becomes flimsy. I'm marking the contour of the future cliff. Now I'll cut off the excess sections with a clerical knife. To make the cliff more visually interesting, let's add a crevice. It's all pretty easy so far, but I promise that the rest won't be too crazy either. Tweezers can be used to simulate the texture of stone. And the knife gives us the shape we want. Before I start, I check out a bunch of references and find appropriate photos of various cliff surfaces. At first, the blank doesn't really look like a cliff, but I'm always keeping the final picture in my head. Every now and then, it's a good idea to file down sharp edges with the sandpaper. If I see that there is not enough Pinaplex somewhere, I simply glue additional sections to the main chunk. Bit by bit, the base takes on the shape I want. There are more and more details and cracks and it gets harder to work with the sandpaper. So I'm using a heat gun. It gets the Pinaplex to warm up a bit and all the rough edges soften up. Now let's add a base coat of grey paint. Let's also add a wash of various shades. Since we don't want a flat looking cliff, I paint recesses simulating shadows. The final stage will involve painting all the protruding elements of the cliff with a dry brush dipped in white paint. Let's apply glue to those sections where we will have grass. The first layer is just substrate that looks like grass. I use a special material from Woodland, just sprinkle it on the glue. Now I take a similar material but with larger flakes. It helps me make little bushes. The gluing process is a bit backwards in this case. First I apply the material and afterwards I attach it with liquid glue. For simulating grass I use a 2mm flock in two shades. I toss the flock into the flocking machine and it will ensure our grass glues perpendicularly instead of just collapsing into a big pile. I apply a thick glue from NOC. The flocking machine really does the work for you, all you have to do is sprinkle the flock onto the glue.
After the glue dries, I use a vacuum to remove all the excess unglued flock. It looks awesome! At this stage, I'm done with the glyph and switching gears to work on the house. It's just finished printing on the 3D printer and we can start painting it. With an airbrush, I paint the roof of the house a base color color. The walls will be a base plaster color. Let's remove the tape and use a brush to paint the base of the house, which remind me of a stump. After we are done painting the house, it's time to focus on the details. It looks so good, it really mimics the surface of a skull. With a black wash, I'm highlighting cracks and scratches. Where the stump touches the house, I'll apply a black wash that looks like a shadow. With a cotton tip, let's remove excess. Now I can drill openings in the windows. While I was working on the house details, I realized that we have to cut the roof in order to put in the windows and add the LED light and the microphone. I hadn't intended on hiding the microphone beneath the roof, but that's probably the best place for it. I have carefully cut the house roof and painted the inside black, so that the house isn't see-through when we turn on the LED. For windows I'm using matte scotch tape. It's only matte on one side and glossy on the other. To increase the matte quality, I'll add another layer. The entryway will have a big lantern, so I'm drilling an opening for the wiring. I have thin wires and they will serve as the wiring and the rope to hold up the lantern at the same time. To simulate a wire rope, I'll twist two wires into a braid with the help of a screwdriver. I'm drilling an opening on the roof for the microphone, which will capture the claps and turn the light on and off. I'm attaching the microphone on the inside. Let's install the LED. Now let's try arranging the lighting. For that I will use a breadboard, Arduino and the sound sensor. The light works, so we can move on. I'm gluing together both halves of the house. I'll attach two space to the rooftop, right where the microphone is located.
Now for the touch of layer with the red stripe. To make the skull teeth glisten, I'll cover them with the glossy glue. Now let's add some greenery to the house. I use both artificial and dried plants. An array of various details adds to the overall aesthetic of a fantasy home. Every actual object has tons of little details which we typically don't notice. Maybe it's a chip on plaster, or a tiny crack on the door, or just some scuffed dirt. We perceive the entire object, ignoring the little things, but if we make a diorama without them, the absence of details will tell us immediately that something is missing. I make an opening for the wiring where the house will be. I cut a spot in the panaplex for the wires and circuit. Time to attach the house to the base. A tree will grow beside the house, which I have modeled in the ZBrush software. It's great for making similar organic models. I painted the printed tree a base color and then I add volume with a dark wash. With a dry brush dipped in a beige paint, I'm highlighting all the protruding spots of the tree trunk. Let's stick some greenery onto the trunk to get a mossy effect. The tree crown will be plastic. There is a yellow ball inside, and I will install an LED light there. I'll cover the outside with a special material from Woodland for imitating bushes. It looks just like a real tree top. I'm soldering the LED lights to the wires, which I've inserted through the tree trunk ahead of time. The tree will have three tops, one big and two small ones. I glue the LED into the yellow ball and carefully attach it to the trunk. Let's attach the tree to the cliff beside the house. We are not done yet, not enough details.
I made the lantern by the entrance with the help of silicone mold for making spheres. The mold is a glossy inside, which means the epoxy ball will be transparent. I pour epoxy into the mold and add an LED light to the top. Now that epoxy has hardened, we can take the sphere out. There are air bubbles inside, and with the LED light on, it looks magical. By the way, you can't even see the LED inside. I'm painting the twisted wires to look like a rope. I'm adding a pair of 12x1 female sockets to the breadboard for the Arduino and one 3x1 female socket for the sound sensor. I'm soldering the sockets from the other side. Two claps to turn the light on and off. I'm connecting all the wires and attaching the circuit to the prepared spot on the base. Our little magic house is ready to go. I'm pleased with the results and I hope you enjoyed watching. Bye!